Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling. Our coverage of the sport continues perhaps a little differently today. As you folks may know, Puerto Rico has been hit hard by two consecutive hurricanes knocking out power, water, and uh, all things life essential. And it was uh, Irma that struck first, a devastating blow, and then Maria followed up with and like a one-two punch here to talk about it as a member of the puerto rican olympic team team puerto rico franklin gomez franklin how are you i'm doing good here i'm here in state college so i can't complain i'm, you, out, I'm out of puerto rico i was there for about a month now i'm back here and you literally were there during the hurricanes and uh i can't even imagine what that was like uh but now your job Hang on, hang on. It's, uh, how can I explain this? It's, it's, been, it's not the same thing when you talk about it and experiencing that. And I was just there uh, cutting trees, uh, unclogging uh, sewers, and uh, it was really rough. A lot of people don't have power still. No, they don't have water. Uh, they don't have a phone signal. So And the mail system is barely working as well. So it's a lot of... A lot of stress going on, um, but uh, we're trying to do the best we can uh, to get back on our feet. A lot of your fellow country people down in Puerto Rico need help and desperately, very urgent needs in the, as, as disaster relief from Washington uh, could be a lot better, by the way. Uh, you and Pastor John have created a video uh, perhaps explaining what we'd like the wrestling community to do. And uh, if we can, let's take a look at the video with Pastor John and Franklin Gomez. Hello everyone, this is Franklin Gomez, uh, the wrestler. I represent Puerto Rico for those who don't, don't know me. Uh, we're here today because uh, Puerto Rico has been through a lot of hardship lately in the past few days through the Hurricane Maria. And I'm here with uh, a good friend of mine, Pastor John, and we are partnering together to bring food, to bring uh, hope to the people around here. He's gonna tell you more about uh, what are we doing here in our partnership? Thank you, Franklin. Basically, everybody's asking how can you help? And we as a church, as a Marasul Church, we have established two help centers where we are putting together these survival kits. This is a small bag containing one water, bread, a pound of rice, and other, other articles of first need. Um, our purpose is to give this to communities and people in steep need and crisis. We have done already 2,000 survivor kits. We have two centers and a warehouse available for storage of aid. We are partnering, partnering with uh, other organizations to find that aid and to store it and to distribute it. We have people. We are eager to help and we are a trustworthy church. Uh, Franklin has known us for the uh, for the past few few years, I guess. Yes, and I, I, every time I come here, I tell the pastor I really enjoy uh, what, what they're doing here. They're, they're a creative church, and they're actually trying to reach out to, to the people around us, and that's why we're doing this, because I would, I would not have been here talking about this if I didn't trust these people, if I didn't trust the community around this church. Marasul is definitely a church that is trying to trying to make things right here around here. So if you want to make the difference and you want to contribute financially, you can do it by text right here under this video. You'll find the instructions. By text is the safest, fastest, more secure way to give to us. And also you can send to this address we're putting down, the, down here, uh, articles of first need to that warehouse. We're going to be able to receive them and distribute them. So thank you for your help. Uh, thank you, Franklin. Hope we got, Puerto Rico is going to be a blessed island. It was blessed before this. is. It will continue to be blessed by God and Jesus through all this. Thank you for your help and your support. Thank you. All right, welcome back, uh, Franklin. First of all, thank you very much for making that, uh, that video. It's very informative, and we do want the wrestling community to uh, send what they can, do what they can to, to aid the good folks in Puerto Rico, one of the... Uh, one of the de devastated areas by both Irma and Maria. Let's talk a little bit about wrestling, Franklin, if we can. Uh, at 31 years old, we go back to the year you started. You were 12 years old, and uh, you then moved to um, the United States, or you had already moved to the United States 
to New Jersey where a host family took you in. And you started wrestling, but you got good pretty darn quick. Uh, you, you were a basketball player before that and, and baseball, if I recall. But how did you get so good at wrestling? Uh, I, I come from a family that has no background whatsoever in wrestling. So you could imagine that I, when I started wrestling, I just didn't know anything about, like, I didn't have any idea what, what that was and how that looked like. I didn't know anything about Olympics or any. So I was very unaware, but uh, once I started uh, just getting into it and playing around with it, I don't know. I just I just like the competitive aspect, and uh, I didn't like when people took me down. So I started getting maybe a little too serious. <laughs> so I just started I started uh, doing stuff uh, extra 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 stuff at the end of the workouts and uh, um, pull ups, sit ups. Uh, uh, ropes, a lot of rope climbing. So my coach, uh, when I was younger, I was uh, uh, from Cuba. So we we trained like, like pretty much like the Cubans train back, back in Puerto Rico. You uh, have had a wonderful amateur career at St. Augustine Prep in New Jersey, and then you wrestled at Brandon High School in Brandon, Florida, where you won a state title at 119 pounds. Going on, you went on to wrestle for. Tom Minkle and the Spartans of Michigan State, and that's where you won an NCAA Division I title at 33. Upon graduation, uh, you were recruited to Penn State University, where you've been training at the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club. What can you tell us about that opportunity? Oh man, I'm just blessed. Just this, that's the best word I can I can describe being here. I'm just blessed to be here, part of, being part of this. Uh, group of athletes and coaches, uh, um, Casey Cunningham, uh, Kale and, and Cody are just like, and now Varner as well, they're like excellent coaches. And uh, you, you are involved in an environment where you're free to grow, you're free to to make uh, your own decisions, you know, they don't, they're not on top of you like you're like a little kid. So I really like that, the autonomy they give you and uh, um, the decision. I mean, if you're there, it's because you really want to to get better and, and and do the best you can in that program. So I couldn't, I could not be in a better program. And also, the community around and the people in the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club, the supporters. I mean, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here and doing what I'm doing. You've competed in the 2011 Pan American Games from Guadalajara, Mexico. Uh, you've competed at the 2011 World Championships, uh, winning a silver there. Uh, but you've also competed uh, for your country for a spot in the 2012 London Olympics, and that's where your Olympic journey began. Betsy Kudakov of Russia uh, is the guy you would face in the first round. Uh, then Tugrul Osgorov. Uh, you face some very tough guys from around the world. The 2014 World Wrestling Championships, round of 16, uh, you made it that far. That was a tough year. 2016 Olympics in Rio, there was some... Um, Controversial calls there. As a matter of fact, many, many folks, including Jake Varner, Kale Sanderson, uh, Ben Askren, uh, the former governor of Puerto Rico and the current governor of Puerto Rico, all went on to Twitter talking about the theft to the sport. You were denied. You got robbed. As a matter of fact, there was a hashtag. It was hashtag Gomez got robbed. Um, have you been able to let that go? Um, I, I, it was, it was really rough, man. It was, it was really rough being there in that position. And after all the training you do, you, you just, I just think, I thank God in my faith. Um, I think that's one of the things that helped me go through the moments like that because I honestly didn't know what to do. I, I mean, I just, I didn't know what to do, but, uh, for some reason I was, I was calm. I was at peace. Just kind of like, well, I, I did the best I could. I couldn't. I'm not in control of this whole situation. So, um, if it wasn't for that, I would have been really mad, very bitter, very angry at what the system, if you will call it like that, did to me. But I, I understand that uh, um, I'm not the favorite to win. I'm not the favorite to, you know, I don't even earn money, a lot of money if you win the medal from Puerto Rico. 
So I'm not doing this. Uh, I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I really love uh, wrestling, and I'm just trying to be the best wrestler, best wrestler I can be. After so the match, moment, after after the match, there were several who. Uh, we're calling for an investigation. In fact, the three uh, officials that were involved in the match were summarily uh, suspended by United World Wrestling because of so-called uh, suspicious officiating. They also claimed an investigation would be done, but the decision would not be overturned, which I don't understand. Um, so, and, and by the way, they were officially expelled from UWW in the uh, the weeks following as well. With, uh, without offering any reason for the expulsion. So it, it bothers me that you were not given any kind of uh, a public hearing on this, and I'm just hoping that next uh, next opportunity for you uh, that you'll receive will go better. What What is coming up next for you? Um, I'm hoping to compete in, the, in December in, in Iran. Um, there is some uh, invitational... I think it's like a team team tournaments or club tournaments or something like that. And I think I'm trying to, one of the U.S. teams here is trying to get me in there. So hopefully I'll be there competing. Uh, the, the Right now I'm just happy that I'm, I'm healthy. You know, it's, it's been a while since, since uh, so even the past few years, there's always been some ache or something, you know. And then in wrestling, you're always going to have something to grind through that. So I'm just happy that I'm, you able to train hard now and, and and stay try to stay a little more focused and and uh, just the few more years that I have of wrestling just try to do the best I can. We're talking to Franklin with Franklin Green, 31 year old, training at the Nittany Line Wrestling Club. If you recall, he was Athlete of the Year at Michigan State the same year he won his Division One crown, and uh, rightfully so. He is a three-time gold medalist, by the way, Pan American Games, Grand Prix of Germany, and the uh, 2014 Central American and Caribbean Games in Veracruz, Mexico. Franklin, again, we want to uh, implore, we want to ask, we want to beg, as it were, uh, all wrestling fans out there watching this interview to take part in your effort in the effort of your church, Pastor John, etc., people that uh, want to help can do so. Again, we'll put the address on the screen so people can. Uh, um, they, you can make a text, uh, a text yeah, donation yeah. as well. Yeah, you could. You could. I mean, this. The thing is, because the mail system is not working over there, so it's kind of hard to send stuff there. Like, I, I would love to send water and things like that from here, but it's not working properly. So. And and so far, what we've been doing, even with the people within Puerto Rico and other friends here, is through that number, you, you text, you put Puerto Rico help and the amount, and then i will send you a link, and then you kind of, you register your, your debit card, and then, you, and then it goes through. It's kind of like PayPal, but through a system of the church. So that's how, how we've been doing it, and uh, it's been working so, it's been working well so far. So thank you for anyone who's, want to partner with us and uh, help a little bit with that. You can text PR help to 787-416-0776. Again, text PR help to 787-416-0776 and get behind the effort of one of our favorites, Franklin Gomez. Franklin, it's always good to talk to you. I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to seeing the next uh, competition for you, and I do hope it is Iran because they uh, they love wrestling so much over there, and it would be great to see you back on the world stage. Well, thank you for having me in your show, and uh, yeah, it's been a while, but hopefully I'll come back again some other time. He is one of the greats. Franklin Gomez, I'm Scott Casper. He's been our very special guest in our Nike hot seat. 